Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're talking about one of my favorite things in Python, which is name tuples. And I'm going to show you both the old way to do them as well as the new uh, typing way to do them and how they replace normal tuples. And so without further ado, let's jump into that. Okay, so we're going to make a little Python file today and uh we're gonna make some contrived functions <laughs> so uh let's make a get users function and i'm gonna you know leave out the annotations for now we'll do the annotations in a bit um but let's say that this function retrieves maybe it retrieves it from a database i don't know but we're just gonna hard code some values here in a list of things and the way i'm gonna represent our users is via a tuple and so maybe we're gonna have like name age and location or something like that and so maybe you'll have like anthony and i am how old am i 29 yeah <laughs> and i'm in california and maybe we have i don't know jeff who is 18 in new york and, and maybe we've got i don't know jason who is 16 and in I don't know, Great Britain. I don't think these are maybe maybe like not great names or <laughs> this field is state codes and country codes. Who, who knows? Whatever. It's all sorts of messed up, but you can just pretend like location is the same random string. And you'll notice that I've represented the 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 people as a tuple, and the tuple has different types in it, so it's you know string, integer, and string. And so if I were to type annotate this, we would say this returns a list of tuple of stir int stir. Uh, but we're not going to do that because we're going to actually replace this in a bit. But anyway, this is our this is our example so far, and maybe we want to iterate over these and print out a value. So, for user in get users, um, you can loop over it that way. But you can actually unpack these values into particular variables. So you might be able to do like name, age, and location, and uh, you know print name is age years old and from location something like this and so I'm, I'm unpacking these variables into you know separate parts here and you'll see if we run this uh you know it it works we print out all of our users <clears throat> and so that's that's normal tuples but then the idea came along that you know it might be able it might be useful to represent these tuples as a uh, an actual object with names but still have backwards compatibility for the tuple syntax and that's when name tuple came along and name tuple is a specialized class which allows you to well it inherits from tuple so it has all of the properties that a tuple does uh, but it'll also have specialized names so let me show you the um actually we'll, we'll first just show you like a a method in Py or a member in Python that is a name tuple. For example, uh, sys.versioninfo. It's not actually a name tuple, but it's, uh, oops, we gotta actually import this. It's not actually a name tuple, but it is implemented in the same way as name tuple, but in C, info. Uh, you can see here that we have, you know, sys.versioninfo. It has these names and this class, but you can also access it like a tuple. So you can see we can get the first element out of here and we can do, you know, uh, A, B, C, equals system version info and we can get you know three eight two as the the version info out um but yeah that's that's one example of it in in the standard library of python but we're going to import collections and collections is going to allow us to define a custom name tuple class and so let's uh call our class user and this is the basic syntax that you would use for this user equals collections dot named tuple you have to additionally put the class name in here as well um, because you know this is a this is a function which generates a class it's a little bit special and then you're going to put your list of attributes in here so we might have name age and location and this is the basic syntax that you would use for a name tuple uh, this is the untyped version we're going to show the typed version later i no longer use the untyped version because it has some some shortcomings and there's some nicer features of the typed version so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to replace my tuples with a call to this user class now uh, this is this is now a class but <laughs> a little bit magical behind the scenes the other cool thing is this is this is all just one line of code um, i mean it'll be four lines in a second but <laughs> for now it's one line of code and you'll see if we run this code 
it works the same as it does before. So this now, you know, this has properties as users, but you can still unpack it like a tuple. Now, if we were to run this interactively and, you know, it still prints out the results there, uh, users equals get users. Uh, if we look at users zero, you'll see that we get this specialized user object, which has a nice, you know, wrapper. You can kind of see what the objects are. Uh, but we can also access those attributes by name. So you can see you can do user zero dot name, user zero dot age, and user zero dot location. Um, and oftentimes this is much more convenient. So maybe you would do instead, you know, user in get users, and maybe we have you know user dot name and user dot age and user dot location. This might make your code a little bit more readable or easier to maintain. Um, and you can see, of course, it still works. Uh, but this is the old version of name tuple. Uh, you used to have to do some, you know, kind of weird stuff if you wanted to add methods to it. So you can turn this into a full classed class by inheriting from this generated class. Now, usually you need to reintroduce slots here. I'm not going to talk about slots. Slots is a pretty advanced concept, but just note that if you're inheriting from a name tuple, you probably need this. Uh, and then you can add extra methods here. So maybe you can say like, uh, print me, and it would do print, <laughs> it would do this down here, but up here, uh, instead of user, we have self. So maybe we could do user.printme instead. And so you can attach methods to these and they kind of, they work like basically normal classes. And so you can see here that that still works. The one thing that I really, really like about name tuples is they are immutable. So. If we were to get a user out of those users again, uh, we actually cannot modify the name here. It stays whatever it is upon construction. And this is a this is a property of objects that is called immutability. I'll actually go over immutability in another video. Um, it's on the list, it's plant. <laughs> but yeah, they're immutable. They look like tuples, but you can add methods and names to them, which is really cool. Um, but now we're going to abandon the old collections.nameTouble because it, it's really hard to type it properly. And we have a new v version of this in the typing module called nameTouble. So we're going to do from typing import nameTouple. And this is, you know, cased a little bit differently. And instead of doing it like this, we're going to inherit from nameTouple. And we're going to use these same three fields, but we're going to give them types. So name is a string age is an integer and location is a stir. And just by doing these type annotations here, this base class is going to magically set up all of these properties for us and do it, you know, automatically. As so you can see here, if we save this now and we rerun, it still works and it still does the same thing. So this is kind of the newer syntax for doing this and type checkers understand this and can give you hints on all of that. Uh, the other thing that I want to go over is with this new syntax, there was a way to do this with the old syntax, but it was kind of confusing. With the new syntax, you can set location, or you can set <laughs> default values. Uh, so if we set a default value for location, you can say like unknown as the default here. And so maybe we add, you know, another user like Carmen San Diego, San Diego. Does she spell it like this? I don't know. <laughs> Who is, I don't know, 32? And maybe Carmen doesn't have a location, and so you can see we've we've omitted the third argument here, but we should get a default from that there. And if we run this now, you can see Carmen San Diego is 32 years old and from unknown. And so this is how you can initialize default values in a name tuple. Uh, my recommendation is to only use immutable defaults here, uh, because otherwise they will all share that instance of that thing. But we'll, we'll go over shared <laughs> shared mutable globals in another video. But anyway, this has been Name Tuples. Hopefully this has been useful. If you guys have additional stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.